have helped people and gave to people who sued me, who lied on me, who betrayed me, who broke my heart and let me down. I have been betrayed so many times that when you don't betray me, I'm shocked. I'm scared to believe that you might be real. They always say give and give from your heart. But I want to add to that and say that sometimes when you give from your heart, you are empowering people. And when you empower the wrong one who has malicious intent, they got their hand out because they have no power. They're weak, they're broke, they're struggling. Something is going on and you reach your hand out to them. You let them move into your home. You let them borrow money. You let them use your car. You let them have access to you and everything that comes with you. So therefore, you are empowering them. You put your hand out to them, and you help them to get off the ground. With that hand, they take your hand, and as soon as they get off the ground, that hand becomes a fist, and they proceed to knock you out. We've all been used, we've all been taken advantage of. It doesn't feel good. And when you get used and taken advantage of or manipulated, it makes you stop, think, and start looking at everybody the same way. It makes you question any and everything and everybody because you were used, manipulated, and taken advantage of. You're doing everything and operating and coming from your heart. But unfortunately, other people have malicious, evil, and vindictive intentions towards you. And all you have to do is forgive those, but more importantly, learn from it. Experience is your highest truth, and I don't want you to ignore the truth. I don't want you to disown the experience. There was an open hand from your heart to help somebody get on their feet. And once you took their hand, they took that same hand that you helped them get up with, turned it into a fist, and tried to figure out a way to knock you out. Sometimes it takes you a minute to process what to do when, when right goes wrong. You're not ready for a new relationship because you can't figure out what happened in the old relationship because you, you said, I gave my very best and it went wrong. And so I have lost confidence in my best because you left me with the notion that maybe my best isn't good enough. So I'm not sure that anybody will ever see my best again. Because I did it from my heart. I did it from my heart. And now I know what young people do not know. Is that right can go wrong. You have to think. You can't just feel. You have to think. You know, even when you're taking care of kids, part of what you're doing is being compassionate. But if you're too compassionate towards your kids, then you do everything for them. And if you do everything for them, then they grow up useless and they never leave and they hate you and they hate everything else too. It's a bad idea. You know, there's a rule if you're working in a place like a nursing home and the rule is, it's a harsh rule. Do not do anything for the people that you're taking care of that they can do for themselves. And so if they have to struggle to feed themselves, you don't bloody well intervene and feed them. You let them maintain their damn independence. And you have to be a hard-hearted bastard to do that, you know, to watch someone struggle like that. But you're furthering their medium to long-term independence and development, and you do the same thing with your children. Treating your children like they're endless permanent victims is a very bad idea. And one of the problems with being really strong is that no one ever asks you if you're okay. No one ever comes to you in the same way that you generally reach out to other people, and I know because I've experienced this. I tend to be the rock that most people lean on, and where is it and how is it that you can find someone that can pull you up? It has been a challenge of mine, and it's something that really used to bother me to a, at a real visceral level for so many years. I was at the point where I wanted to cry because it's like, who can I lean on? And I know that's your problem. I know that's what you're dealing with and you're asking me, how do I go find a mentor? How do I find someone that could support me? What I've found is that there are two types of mentors that have been most valuable in my journey to becoming a stronger version of myself. That through books. You're going to find that there are certain individuals who have written volumes and volumes of texts that will support you in almost every area and endeavor in your life. But 
You also need someone who's there with you, who's talking to you, who you can touch and see, who's going to support you. And it's not easy to find that type of person. In fact, those that are that are, that are more able to help you than others in that regard are really busy. Their time is spoken for on so many different levels. When I say I have mentors and I go see mentors, it's not that I was so lucky that some older man took me under his wing. But to get the undivided attention of someone who you know has that magnetic strength that we mentioned earlier that you have, you're going to have to trade a portion of your energy with that person so that they can give you that because their time is valuable. Because you've been through some stuff and you can help them, give them advice, give them insight over things that they may be struggling with. This is what the love circle is. We spread love. I got 18 million followers because I've been spreading love. That's what this is about, nothing else. I don't care about the numbers if I'm not trying to impact and change lives. When people write comments and tell their stories, respond to 10 people without you knowing you have signed up to be a part of the love circle. I love you. Tag whoever needs to see this video and make sure you share it. If you've got somebody that's dragging, that's going down in a downward spiral, and you decide that you're just going to pour everything into them, well, then you're going to go down that downward spiral as well. And now you're not going to be able to help them. So I think you definitely have to take care of yourself as a person so that you have the platform to take care of someone else and help someone move in the right direction. Oftentimes when you think you're helping someone, you're really just enabling them. You gotta detach, you gotta make sure you're not becoming emotional. You gotta make sure that you're seeing the person and the situation for what it really is. Not what you want it to be, but what it really is. Who they really are, what they are really doing. And then when you're detached, you gotta make logical decisions from that point of detachment to decide whether this person can be helped and how far you're willing to go to help them. And you gotta remember, you can't be a hero to everybody. People who are not your children, you are under no obligation to help people. You're not responsible for another adult's happiness, well-being, or welfare. You're not responsible for that, nor should you make yourself responsible for another person. Take that pressure off you. First of all, if they didn't have your number, what would they do? I always say that. You're her friend. She's not your friend. You have a one-sided friendship. So what you got to do is you got to even it out. Just when the phone rang, you know not to answer it because she wants something. So don't answer it. Here's the best thing to do. Stop using your voicemail on your phone because I'm going to teach you something. Have, do you notice? that 95% of all your voicemails are a request. Let your voicemail fill up and don't ever empty it. Don't you become the 911 in everybody's life. Just stop. Release yourself from the pressure. Now her number, I would just block her number. I just learned how to block numbers this past Christmas. Oh my God, did you all know that? It's the greatest, oh my God. Oh, oh. That's what I gave myself for Christmas. <laughs> My life's so good right now. <laughs> Some of y'all right now are in relationships and friendships that you are clearly being used and taken advantage of. They're either gonna come after your man when you let them live with you, come after your wife. They're jealous of who you are and all the things you have, and yet they're using you for these various things. Pay attention to people and who they really are. Don't manipulate your mind to thinking, you know what, maybe I'm just being a negative person. There's this thing called instincts, intuition, and discernment. Pay attention to them. Don't disown them because you will end up in pain in the end if you don't move on the discernment, the instincts, and the intuition about people, things, and situations. When life catch you on the blind side, when the messenger of misery visits you, what are you going to do? What will keep you in the game when life knocks you to the canvas? So you got to have some reasons that when life knocks you down, and it's going to. Hello, it's going to knock you down. 
When people disappoint you, and that's going to happen. When they betray you, and that's going to happen. When they lie to you, and that's going to happen. When they say, oh, you can count on me, and they won't show up, and that's going to happen. When you want to throw in the towel and give up yourself, and that's going to happen. When life collapses on you and catch you on the blind side, it drops you to your knees and starts choking you. You got a dream? No, I ain't got no dream. <laughs> and that's going to happen. What reason can you remember that you can call on, that you can reach on, that can make you get back up? how to turn nothing into something. And here's a little gist of what I've been covering. First, to turn nothing into something, you start with ideas and imagination. Now, it's hard to call ideas and imagination nothing. How tangible are ideas and imagination? It's a bit of a mystery. So you can't really call ideas that can be turned into a hotel, ideas that can be turned into an enterprise, ideas that can be turned into the salt vaccine, ideas that can be turned into miracle products, ideas. You couldn't really call the idea nothing. It must have some kind of substance. And imagination can't really be nothing. We call it nothing because it isn't tangible. It isn't like a podium. It isn't that real, but it is almost real.